I guess I'm just gonna delete my channel because I think she's kind of right. Hello everyone, I'm wearing this fancy top to trick you into thinking that my opinions on books are trustworthy and worth listening to. I have my trusty reading journal. Today we are going to be talking about all the books that I read in the month of May. We have The Invisible Life of Adia LaRue. I read a few literature books. I know, I am shocked too. And a book about feminism, which I'm very excited to talk about. I made myself a nice cup of tea. I put a little plant there on top of the couch to make the space a little bit more cozy. And let's have a little chat. <laughs> First, I don't have any of the books with me right now because I'm still filming at my parents' house, um, but it doesn't matter. I'll just put a little picture of them up here. Let's just immediately start with the book that I'm sure a lot of you have been very excited to hear my opinion on, and that is The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue. Yes, I finally read it almost half a year after it came out. This is the newest release by V.E. Schwab, one of my favorite authors, a very popular author. It's a fantasy book, but it's very light fantasy. It feels more like a contemporary novel with some historical elements and then a little bit of fantasy sprinkled in. And it's about this girl, Eddie LaRue, who lives in France in the 18th century. She makes a deal with the darkness to live forever, but the price she pays is that everyone she meets immediately forgets her, so she cannot form any meaningful kind of relationships because every time someone looks away from her, they have immediately forgotten who she is. And it's just 500 pages of her going through life, learning about like her life story, the people she meets, little things that happen that change the course of her destiny. It's a very narrative story, it's very focused on this grand storyline of her life that like spans over 300 years and the people that she meets and the people she inspires. And it's very beautiful, but this book has been extremely hyped. I was kind of expecting this to become one of my new favorite books. Everyone adores it. I love V. Schwab. I was very much expecting to be blown away by this. And that didn't really happen. Although I really enjoyed this book, don't get me wrong, I definitely have a few things that I thought really could have been better. Let me just start with the good things. This story is just an incredible, well, story. Like the narrative, the storytelling that V. Schwab shows here is just top class. It really reminds me of the way Taylor Jenkins reads, tells her stories in a way that even when there's nothing super interesting happening in a little bit, you're still absolutely captivated and you just want to keep reading. And that just shows how good of a writer V. Schwab is and I think she really showed her storytelling abilities with this book. And I also really love how this book explores the concept of the curse that Eddie has, which is everyone immediately forgets who you are. It's kind of like one of those books that uses its fantasy elements to like strengthen the story, to really add something to an otherwise just normal contemporary story. So overall a wonderful story, I had a really great time reading it, but I just want to talk about a few things that just, just like disappointed me, you know, and I was like, eh, we, this didn't need to happen. The first little small thing is that I found the plot to be particularly predictable, almost every big plot twist was at least for me, pretty easy to spot, but that's just a minor thing. I think my biggest gripe with this story is that if you have a book that's called The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, that is completely about the life of this one main character that pretty much revolves around one character, you can at least make her interesting. I found our main character, Addie LaRue, to be ironically extremely forgettable. She has no personality 
outside the fact that she was cursed and the fact that she like initially ran away from a marriage and that she didn't want to like have an arranged marriage and i've said this before but i just think we're past the idea that women are well-developed characters if their only character trait is that they didn't want to be in a forced marriage and i just wanted to have you know actual more interesting personality traits in our main character we have another main character that is introduced later into the story called Henry, who I loved so much more. I loved his POV. When you're reading the book, you can clearly tell that Henry does have flaws and does have like things that he needs to work through. He actually goes through some kind of character development. And I just really miss that in Addie. And that's a shame. I will say that Henry, I can't say much about Henry because it would be spoilers, but he is one of my new favorite characters, like in fiction of all time. I, I loved his part of the book. I just didn't really care about Eddie's. <laughs> and another thing, oh my gosh. So we have this other character is like the darkness, the devil that Eddie makes a deal with at the beginning of the book. And he comes back throughout the story like he's an actual like pretty important character. And I can't believe I'm going to say this. This is a thing I never thought I would ever have to say. But I'm just over male broody characters who are their personification of the darkness. And like have no other personality traits other than that they are the personification of the darkness. I love my darkness characters. The character, the devil character in this book is just another example of one that I've seen a thousand times before in books. They're just like dark broody dudes, but just like Addie, just kind of lack any other kind of like depth and really interesting personality traits. I was totally expecting to be a huge fan of this character and to like really swoon over him, but that just didn't happen. You think that if a character is practically a black hole of a person, they'd have some gravity to them, but no, unfortunately not. So I guess the bottom line is that I really wish that Eddie and this darkness character were given the same kind of like characterization as Henry was given. Um, but other than that, I did really enjoy it because just of how well the storytelling was done. I think if you're a very plot based reader, this book's not really going to be for you because not a lot happens. Like it's not like an ex I've seen some people not enjoying this book because they were like nothing happens. And that is true. It's one of those books again, kind of like Taylor Jenkins reads stories, where it's just about like, the storytelling and the narrative that's just pulls you in. I wanted to say captivate, but I've said the word captivate enough times now. So I think you get the message. <laughs> yeah, I think I would give this book like 3.75 slash four stars. I'm not sure how to rate this, but I did enjoy it and I would recommend it. Then a book that I listened to on audiobook is Men Explain Things to Me by Rebecca Solnit. It's a collection of essays on feminism mostly, like they're all yeah, they are all related to feminism. And only the first essay is called Men Explain Things to Me, which is about what you would expect it to be about. But the other essays are about other subjects. Very quick. I think I listened the audiobooks like three hours. And I really enjoyed this. Well, like many essay bundles, some essays were stronger than others. For example, the first one, Men Explain Things to Me, which is about basically about mansplaining kind of except the common misconception is that the term mansplaining came from this essay which it doesn't and rebecca solnit also explains how she d actually doesn't even like the term mansplaining because it kind of implies that it's like an inherent fault that men have to like over explain everything instead of seeing it as like a a societal thing like a consequence of like society. In her life there have been multiple occasions of, hey cat, you looking around? You want to be in the video? Nope. <laughs> She's not gonna be there. Anyway, <laughs> it's just a few anecdotes about like her experience with men like over explaining things to her and assuming that she just has no experience in certain things that she clearly does have experience in. This one was fine but like a few other essays of her that I found to be a little less strong. It's mostly based on a lot of like 
anecdotes, which I'm usually not a huge fan of. We want the data. <laughs> but yeah, I think where Rebecca Solnit really shined in her essays was when she was talking about like broader ideas and like her analysis of like the discourse. <laughs> I wrote, I wrote stuff down because I am in control of what I read and I'm very organized. I really liked one of the last essays where she talks about the importance of a language in a movement like feminism and like how important it is that the movement has coined certain words that are maybe like super normal in our everyday language right now but they had to be invented like feminists had to come up with those words to bring attention to a concept that people weren't even aware of and just by giving it a word that already changes so much because it suddenly brings the concept into people's like everyday comprehension and i thought that was really nice and there was also this other essay that really stuck with me where she talked about like how we talk about art and media and how we have this urge to always categorize and explain and review every piece of art that we experience even though experiences of art cannot really fully be communicated with language um so um i guess i'm just gonna delete my channel because i think she's kind of right yeah so that kind of did something with my brain <laughs> yeah how do I continue this video now? Because I immediately realized... I always think it's like really cool when reviewers on booktube have these like really intricate rating systems or reviewing systems with like all these aspects of the book like characters, plots, world building, etc. that they give a mark and then based on like the average there rolls out like a number that is indicative of how good the book was. Or when I review a book and I like systematically go through the plots and the characters and the things I liked and the things I didn't like and then I give it a rating on a scale from one to five and it just made me realize that that is exactly what Rebecca Solnit was talking about in her essay that we just have this like need to categorize and put into like a neat box our experience of a book we read and maybe we kind of give ourselves the illusion that by like neatly categorizing it like that we've created this like perfect way of perfectly conveying our like internal experience that we had while reading the book but I'm just like thinking is my experience of a book really just the sum of the things I liked and didn't like I don't think so. So... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even when I just reviewed Ellie LaRue, I gave a very long list of things that I didn't like and ended up saying I did end up liking it and I know that I'm gonna get comments from people, because this always happens, people saying, oh, shame to hear that you didn't like the book, because I mentioned a lot of things that I didn't like, even though I said that I really liked it. But sometimes I can't really explain what exactly it was about the book, like what exactly it is about the book that made me enjoy it anyway, despite all these other things. And I think Rebecca Solnit really did well by kind of asking the question, like, can we even convey like that feeling, that experience with like language? Why do we feel this need to like review every book that we read? Yeah, so. How how am I gonna continue this video now? <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the next book that I'm gonna review for you guys. Uh, yeah, so I would recommend reading Man Explain Things to Me. The next book I read was Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. He's the Nobel Prize winning author of Never Let Me Go, a book that I really enjoyed and this is like his new release. It's kind of like speculative fiction. I guess now that I think about it, it's kind of like The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue where it's like a piece of like fiction literature with a speculative element but it's not like full-on fantasy science fiction, you know? It just has a small speculative element 
to aid telling the story. And Clara and the Sun is about Clara, who is an artificial friend who you can practically buy as a friend for your child. And she gets bought um, to be the artificial friend to Jody. And you kind of follow what that is like and like how Clara as this like AI robot thing experiences the world. And what I really like about Ishiguro's writing is that everything he writes is kind of like a mystery. You slowly start to figure out what is happening. Everything's like weird. Everything is vague and mysterious. And like you slowly start to figure out what is going on, what this futuristic society looks like, what secrets people are keeping. It's really nice. And Ishiguro is really good at writing these scenes with these like kind of like painful, almost cringy scenes between characters that like perfectly captures and lets you get to know the characters in the way that they like react to each other. Just wonderful character work. But I will say that I was pretty disappointed in the ending. Kind of fizzled out. Like the story definitely does go into some interesting things about AI and the idea of having a soul, etc. But I really felt like it could have just done more like I felt the story just scratched the surface and really there was a lot of opportunity to say more about AI and humanity etc. It was like a really great build up and then it kind of just like eh. but I do find myself still like thinking about certain parts of this book so maybe that does say something. I think I just broke my brain I don't know how to review books anymore. <laughs> Let me just talk about it in a way of like when I think you would like this book. I think you would like this book if you like the idea of kind of like dystopian speculative fiction. The kind of if you're interested in ideas on AI. I think you would enjoy this book if you really enjoy character work. You would not enjoy this book if you want some like explosive full of action plot because it's not that at all. I think that's the best way to describe it moving on. <laughs> so I read Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro and I was like you know what I want to read his other work because I've also read Never Let Me Go and I know that one of his other like one of his like most famous books is The Remains of the Day. So I went to the library and was like you know what I'm gonna read The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. I did not make notes on this book. I forgot to make notes. I'm not lying, I seriously forgot to make notes. So now I really have no framework anymore on how to review this book, so that's great. <laughs> Unlike Never Let Me Go and Clara and the Sun, The Remains of the Day has no speculative aspect to it. It's just literary fiction that really kind of like reminds me of the type of books that I had to read for school. And it's about this butler in the 50s and he looks back on his life as a butler. Which sounds kind of in uninteresting. Not the type of book that I would have picked up if it wasn't for the fact that I wanted to read more from this author. And I will say that I was indeed kind of bored at the beginning of the book. But does that say something about the book or does that say more about me and the type of books I like and don't like? I mean... I mean, I guess that just counts for every review that I make, right? Like, in a way, it just says more about me than about the book. And if I like the book, then that doesn't really tell you much unless you know that you have a similar taste in books as I do. Um, so yeah, The Remains of the Day. What did I think about it? I was surprised at how much I ended up enjoying it because this is just one of those books where you just slowly really get attached to these characters and just like in Clara and the Sun there are just these scenes that are pretty like not very exciting <laughs> but just the way the characters react to each other and the little kind of like awkward things that happen and the choices that the characters make tell you so much about who these people are and just like the deep flaws that they have. You just want to like grab the character's shoulders and be like, come on, I just want you to overcome your flaws. <laughs> but just like with Clara and the Sun, I felt like the story kind of fizzled out at the ending. I do think it's uh, kind of funny because I, I rarely like read these kind of like literature books or just like fiction 
what is like the genre for it just like contemporary fiction and i do think i need to review them in a different way than i review the fantasy books that i read because i can't like talk about the remains of the day and be like mm, yeah i don't know i kind of lacked um adventure i really felt like the story could just be a little bit more exciting because that's not like that was never the point you know this is what happens when i don't make notes for my reviews it just turns into a blabble but maybe maybe that's a more accurate representation of how i really experienced the book huh maybe all of my reviews from now on are just going to be incoherent rambles to give you a stream of consciousness idea uh, of how this book made me feel <laughs> maybe all of my next reviews are just gonna be me doing an interpretive dance of how i experienced the story <laughs> anyway i ended up giving it three stars please in the comments leave a video of you doing an interpretive dance of the best book that you read this month i know that that's not possible maybe that's the point Happy reading.